Good morning. I hope you're having a great day. This is the beginning of the road. This is where it all starts. You hear the end of the road quite a lot. This is the beginning of the road to legendary Grandmaster. So for those of you who aren't familiar, I am second thread, uh, Grandmaster second thread in fact, on Code Forces. Code Forces is the, the main competitive programming website and they have this really nice ELO system which is a fantastic way to measure your self-worth with a single number. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's very convenient, maybe not a great practice, but I think a fun one nevertheless. That's what we're gonna be doing. So this is my current rating. It represents how good I am as a competitive programmer, and it's pretty accurate. Basically, people with better rating can pretty consistently perform better than people who are worse. And if it's wrong, then your rating gets updated accordingly. Um, so currently I am roughly 2,500. I had a, a contest earlier this week where I had a, a gain of about 101 points. So that's pretty good. Um, and the goal is to go from where I am now all the way up to 3,000. So that's the cutoff for Legendary Grandmaster. The best competitive programmer of all time, according to most people, is Tourist, Kennedy Grokovich. Grokovich, his last name's a little tricky to pronounce. He's a terrific guy. Uh, and we'll talk about him a little bit later in this video a bit more. But his rating is roughly 3,700. So I need to go from where I am now, 2,500, to 3,000, which is almost halfway between the difference of where I currently am and where a tourist is. That's how much I need to improve. Another way of looking at it is I can compare myself to myself. I need to improve roughly the same amount from now as I did over the past three and a half years. So three and a half years ago, I was rated roughly 2,000. I'm about 500 points higher now. I need to get another 500 points higher than that in order to reach the rating of 3,000. So this is going to be a difficult goal. This is a, a non-trivial task that I'm picking up here. Um, but I think it'll be worth it. Now, before we continue with this video anymore, there's, there's one thing that I want to say. And this is maybe, maybe an inspirational lesson to everybody here. Um, and that is in life, whether you're you know, trying to reach the rank of Grandmaster or of International Grandmaster or something unrelated to programming. Maybe you're trying to run a marathon, trying to get some, some job or something, uh, trying to publish a paper in some academic journal, which I know nothing about. A big part of it is you know, talent and being good at, thing, at the thing, but probably an even bigger part is having the confidence and conviction that you have the ability to do that thing. And then putting in the effort and not giving up when things get difficult. And as a quick piece of evidence here, maybe not proof that this is true, but a reason to believe that it might be, uh, I have a nice story from when I was in high school. So I think I was a, either a freshman or a sophomore in high school, and I saw this thing called a, a Tough Mudder. It's, it's a race. It's kind of similar to a Spartan run, if you're familiar with that. It's like 10 to 12 miles. But the tricky part about it, about it is not just like a straight run. The interesting part is every half mile, so this is like 20 to 24 times in total, uh, they'll have an obstacle in the middle of the, of the run, like in the middle of the track. And you'll have to cross that obstacle in order to keep going. Maybe it's like a bunch of barbed wire, and then you have to army crawl through a bunch of mud underneath it. Or you got to go through this, like climb up this rock wall and then go through this like 30 foot slide um, downhill into this ice pool, then get out of the ice pool. Or there's like the, the American Ninja Warrior wall that you run up and then you grab the top. So there, there's one like that. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. One of the most scary ones for me personally was they have this, these wires that are hanging down and you need to run up these like very steep hills that are maybe two or three feet tall. They're full of mud because people have been running up them all day. And you go up these, these hills, it's very easy to slip, and then you go through these electrical wires, and as soon as you touch the wires, you get electrocuted. Now, of course, the strategy is to be moving fast enough so that when you do get electrocuted and your body tenses up, you go through the wires, you don't get stuck on them, and then someone has to like pull you out because you're spazzing out on the wires. Uh, obviously, this is, this is all... A little, a little scary, especially if you've never done it before. Now, lots of people do it. I don't think anybody ever really dies. You wind up being fine if you do get in trouble. They have people to help you. 
So it isn't actually like a concern, um, but it's 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 pretty scary. I was a early young high schooler at the time, and I had driven like eight hours up to this place. So I was definitely going to give it a shot because I'd already you know gotten a hotel, which for me was expensive at the time. Um, putting a lot of effort into into driving here, getting here, signing up for the race, everything like that. So I was going to give it a shot. I wasn't going to just like quit. But when I got to it, I'm like, wow, this is maybe a bit tougher than I signed up for. I'd done a half marathon in the past, so I'd run that far. But the obstacles were, were a bit scary to me. Um, I wasn't really sure that I could do it. But when I got like maybe a mile and a half in, I saw this obese 50-year-old, probably like 350-pound soccer mom who was doing this. And, you know, I'm sure there are lots of terrific, obese soccer mom people out there uh, that that I'd be great friends with, and and I'm sure they're great at lots of stuff. But when it comes to a physically demanding, you know, very difficult sport like this, like running, seeing something like that is a great encouragement that you can do it as well, right? If this 450-pound, you know, 45-year-old soccer mom is able to do this, you know, I'm what, like a 16-year-old male who's in good shape, I can definitely do it too. There is not any particular obstacle that, you know, I'm going to end up dying over and somehow she's just going to, you know, just walk over my dead body and continue through it like it's nothing, right? If she's able to do it, I'll figure out a way to manage to get to the finish line as well. Now, maybe that's not a great way of going through life, like thinking you're better than other people, but is a good chance to prove it, right? If you do think you are better, then let's see it. Let's You do it. Go finish the race uh, and then keep going. And I think it was actually very, very helpful in getting through all of the obstacles, particularly the ones that I was like nervous about. You know, when you're climbing up some rope and they're pouring down a fire hose of freezing cold water on you, the whole time I'm just thinking, you know, if she can do it, then I, I can too. I had this image of, of this obese woman just being able to, you know, pass me on one of these, on this rope climb. And it's like, hmm, that's not happening. Nope, I am I am finishing this race. There is no way this woman is getting to the finish line and I'm not. It's that, that's just, there's no world in which that happens. So I ended up finishing it. Um, and that was, that was some great motivation for it. And what I realized after was that, you know, it didn't actually matter whether this obese woman was in the race at all. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if she did finish. I like to think that she did. It makes me feel good knowing that that, that she finished and that this was maybe the reason that I finished. So I'm very glad she was part of the race, and it certainly helped me. Um, so I'm very thankful in that respect. But if instead I had just, like, all that mattered, I didn't interact with her at all. I just passed her a mile in, and that was it. But knowing that she could do it was what inspired me to be able to think that I could certainly do it as well. It had nothing to do with the fact that she was actually there. You can apply the same thing to competitive programming. Now, tourist isn't a 45-year-old obese soccer mom. But if you just imagine, what if tourist was an obese American old person? Like, that's an interesting thought, you know? If tourist was an obese American eating cheeseburgers uh, and his Diet Coke, you know? Like, it's pretty hard for you to just be okay with tourists solving all of these problems and you just thinking, oh, yeah, no, I can't do that. It's pretty unlikely that if you put in the time and effort and practice that, that the obese American did, it's, it's pretty likely you could figure that out too, you know? Um, and it's not fair to, to call tourists that because he certainly isn't. But if you mentally think that in your mind, maybe that's some good encouragement. Who knows? We're going to try it for this contest anyway, and uh, here we go. Now, of course, I can't spend this entire series talking about how tourist is an obese soccer mom because he's not. But uh, we can talk about how we improve and try and reach our goal in this series so let's jump into that. 
Um, what this series is mainly going to be about is going to be a weekly thing where I talk about the contests that I've done in the past week, what I've upsolved, and the new things that I've learned in order to get better. The most important thing that I've done here is a rated Div 1 contest. This was um, round 749. I did quite well, actually. Um, I got 59th place, which is pretty good. It's not quite LGM level. The LGMs who were better than me are still losing rating. So I still got to get better than this. But it's it's not it's not bad. Um, I was pretty happy with this performance. I got through A through E quite well. I had a little bit of issues on F. I had the wrong idea in the beginning. Um, but then I learned how to do it slightly better. And that... That ended up getting correct. Um, and then I also know how to do H. So I figured H out as well. I just didn't have time to, to implement it in the contest. So I was pretty happy with it. If you want to see me actually do this competition, that's on my channel as well. It's the last video I've posted. Um, but yeah, I was pretty happy with this contest. I got quite a good rating boost from it. And then also, that was last weekend, late last weekend. This weekend, I did a programming contest with my team. So this was the German Collegiate Programming Contest 2020. Um, I did this with the UCF programming team. This is a, a private site, so you can't see this, but you can see the, the contest. It's online, publicly available. And I solved 11 of the problems. The winning team had 13. To be fair, I didn't have a team. Um, but yeah, not, not terrible. I was pretty happy with how I performed. I performed some of the UCF teams, all the best ones. So good there. Um, I had a little bit of issues with A. I slightly misread the problem. I thought it was asking for the best you can do rather than can you do it perfectly. Um, so I actually figured out a way of calculating the best you can do, which is a little bit more difficult. It's not that much worse. And then I just simplified my solution after that. I'm like, well, is the best you can do perfect? And then I just printed whether or not it was. So yeah, I could have sped up all of my submissions by like 20 minutes, probably 25 minutes if I had done that better. And then I, I didn't realize a couple things. I missed a couple observations. Um, and then H, I was a little slow on, but H was still very good practice. H was, uh, spoiler here, skip like 20 seconds in advance. H was a DP problem where you optimize your transition with a data structure. So I knew how to do stuff like that. I just hadn't done that in the past very often. So this was very good implementation practice. Plus it was a little bit ugly to implement. So that's always a good thing to practice. Um, yeah, G wasn't too bad. I have nothing really to complain about there. Yeah, I think I was not a fun problem, but whatever, I did it. Sometimes you gotta swallow a big pill and it's annoying. So yeah, that's what I've, what I've done this week um, in order to get better. And hopefully we'll have an update basically every week. I guess we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. But um, yeah, that's the update now. I'll try and keep these, these videos much shorter except for this one. Now there's one last thing that I wanna say before we end here. And that is that you don't always get to be part of the start of something. Um, there are some moments in history where it's pretty clear there's a very good chance this thing is gonna be successful and important. And this is a very clear marking of where it begins like the Declaration of Independence, uh, the founding of a bunch of small startups. All of those are very clear start. You can attribute the beginning of something to that moment. And this is where I have first decided that I actually want to go for becoming LGM, where I'm not just satisfied with being red. Um, I want to, to get the, the black S, the black letter, the Nutella, as some people call it. So the journey begins here. Um, here we go. Now, if this was at all inspiring to you, uh, maybe I've, I've done my job there. But declaring that this is going to happen is certainly very inspiring to me. Um, and I know it's, it's pretty easy now. I'm coming off a, a good contest, a second good contest here. Um, and it's going to be more difficult once I get a you know, minus 200 uh, contest. I do very poorly in some Div 1 round. But it's, it's a long-term game, right? I do competitive programming because it's fun, but it doesn't hurt to set goals along the way. Um, so there you go. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the scoreboard. Goodbye.